Hello, welcome to another episode of Live from the Abyss. Um, I am Doth Nihilus. Um, today we have a special, another special guest. Uh, her name is Christina De, Kur, uh, De Turk, and we will be discussing beginner tips for tarot. Um, any, anyone who's interested in tarot or who wants to learn how to read tarot, etc., um, I'm really excited to have her on, um, she's been on a few other, um, uh, other content creators, uh, recently, and, um, I am, uh, privileged and, and honored to have her on my show as well, um, so I'm just kind of waiting for her, uh, to come on. See if I'll, I can send her an invite. Bye. Hello. Hi. How Welcome to you? the events. Hi. Hopefully I can see the questions. Am I the only one here? It only says one live. I think that's you. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. How are you doing, Wade? Doing pretty good. How about you? Good. I'm doing great. Oh, see, why can't the devil horns be on the lives? I like That's the devil horns so much. I know it's not a big deal. They should definitely make that a thing. <laughs> they should. How are you doing today? Doing really good. Um, so, first off, tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah. Well, my name is Christina. Sorry, one second. I'll stop being annoying with the filters. Uh, okay. My name is Christina. Um... What do I share? I have many animals. I have a rabbit and six cats and a snake. Um, I've been reading tarot for like four to five years now. Um, an occult practitioner. <laughs> I don't know what else to share. Okay, well, that's a good start. And that's a lot of cats. I'm envious yeah. because I love cats. Yeah. I have a lot of cats. I have two fur babies of my own. You have two? Um, oh my god, what kind of cats are they? Um, well, if I could get one over here, I would, I would definitely um, invite her onto the show for a, a quick hello. Be, hell yeah. Unfortunately, she is doing, too busy doing her own thing at the moment. That's okay. Because that's, that's, okay. that's how cats are, you know, they're, they're only concerned with, you know, food, water, and making sure the litter box is, you know, maintained. Yeah. Or love on their own time. I totally get what? it. Or love on their own time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so to start off, um, what got you into tarot in the first place? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So I was dating a woman, um, and she was kind of the catalyst for my whole practice. She told me one day, she's like, how do you not know yet you're a psychic? I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you're a psychic it's very clear and she was like how do you not know this and she was like okay i'm gonna give you a deck this is my first deck i don't use it anymore and she's like i want you to give us some readings tonight and see how this goes so she passed on my first deck the crystal visions tarot and i gave like five readings that night um i remember being really frustrated i was just like i don't know how to do this what do you mean do this what is this i didn't grow up with this and, but because of her, I got into tarot and I've been reading tarot ever since. And I've been looking into magic and I'm an occult practitioner all because she opened the box and said this, all this magic and all this stuff was real. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here because you didn't grow up with this. And now I just, I can't even imagine not reading tarot. I can't imagine not being a practitioner. I'm so ingrained in this culture now. I just can't imagine being a normie anymore. Right. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, as if like normal is like a, a thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people just don't exist in this, and I get it. You know, it's really funny how people would be like, "Whoa, you're a tarot reader? What is that?" But it's so normal for me now that I'm just like, "Okay, yeah, I'm a psychic, and I read for people. I can see your future, past, presence." Um, I have like the whole spill I give to people who are new to this, but it, it's really funny because all I want to talk about these days. 
it's like what I'm learning, what I'm practicing, my daily rituals. I, I swear I'll have anyone over and I'm doing the LBRP and I'm walking them through it. I'm like, okay, this is gonna seem a little funny because it was funny to me at first, but this is like, I can't not do this. Um, so yeah, I, I'm trying to do more normie stuff again because I just wanna just talk about the occult and learn about the occult and share it with everyone. But like you said, there are normal people who are just like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so as, as far as mediumship, um, I have a frog staring at me in the window. <laughs> That's cute. Um, so as far as mediumship is, is tarot the only, um, uh, tool that you use? Um, mediumship? I mean, no, it's not the only tool I use. I mean, I do call upon guides and ancestors. I, I want to open the space so they can join and talk to me but it's not required, sometimes they don't show up. Um, I mean, I utilize more than just tarot cards. In the last time I was with Blend, I think you were there. Um, I utilized Oracle and I utilize um, other cardamancy decks. I don't just do tarot. Um, I mean, it does play a part, but it's not the focal of my practice right now. It's more just intuitive information that I get and then assessing the person's situation with the cards. Okay. Um, uh, when I, when I was talking about mediumship, I was, you know, cause you said you, you know, uh, your, your girlfriend at the time said you were psychic. And so, yeah, yeah that, that's um, why I use that word. I wasn't sure. Oh, if, okay. If, if I separate was... psychic and prophecy with mediumship because mediumship oh, okay. is like, I'm conjuring a spirit right in front of me when intuitive information is a little different, but I know what you're saying. I guess okay. there's a lot of different terms for a lot of different things, and I just kind of interchange them. Okay, all right. Um, uh, all right. You mentioned something. Um, oh, I'll get, I'll get back to that a, a little bit later. I want to ask you about your, your practice, your daily practice and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, what is your favorite card? The High Priestess. The High Priestess? Okay. Yeah. When I see her, um, it's really sweet. She's what's direct, like your least... Favorite. Right. Huh? What, what's your least favorite card? <sighs> hmm. Man, that's really hard. I see the attribu attributes and the importance in every card. Because a lot of, like the Minor Arcana, for example, it's always different life circumstances. I guess the Seven of Swords... Seven of Swords, yeah. Just because uh, you you never know if someone is just being deceitful and sneaky or if it's like they're just keeping things in the down low. That throws me off. Oh, I guess also the Four of Cups. It's, I get the Four of Cups sometimes. And it's basically just someone like, I'm not moving. Don't move me. I'm so satisfied with where I'm at. And that frustrates me. Because I'm like, sometimes you just, you have to move. But then I'm the one who's just not making the change in my life. And I'm like, I see that and I'm like, oh, stop it. You're right. But also like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> and right. people don't want to be told they have to make changes in their lives, even if they come to tarot readers. They want to be told that they're on the right path or they're doing everything great. And I'm oftentimes kicking their butt like, this is a problem. This is holding right. me back. It's probably that one. It's a really frustrating card. Yeah. And, 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 I can see why it would be a frustrating card because you know it's uh, exemplative of of stagnation and um, lack of progress, and, and you want to be uh, progressing in your life and in your practice. So yeah. I can see why that would be frustrating. Well, and then some things that you need to change to like improve your life, you're not gonna want to change. So for someone, it might be a relationship. Like that's relationships holding you back. That person probably doesn't want to hear that, especially if they're in love with that person. So some things are just like that, that it's like, you don't want to change this, even though it would make a huge difference. It, it, it just happens. It just happens. Okay. Um, as, aside from your, your, your first gifted deck, um, what, what would your favorite deck be? What that I own? <laughs> um, yes. I, yes. I deck I don't or one you don't own. Yes. Um, okay. It's tied between um, uh, Thorn, Oak, and Ash, or Th Thorn, Ash, and Oak. 
it's like a nature deck. Um, it's by Three Trees Terror, I believe is the owner or the, the creator of it. I really want that deck. It's like the swords is a raven and the pentacles is a rabbit. I have all these woodland creatures that represent these scenes and these themes for the cards. I like that a lot. Um, I also want the Crimson Asteria Tarot deck. It's very indie and different. Um, that one's really beautiful. And the Pacific Northwest Tarot deck. All of those are my top favorites. There's a Pacific Northwest Tarot yeah, deck? Yeah, I want that. I live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, the Sun card is the Dahlia card. And the Empress is a rabbit. And it's just, it's mine. I want that deck. It's so beautiful. <laughs> It has all these creatures that you find in the Pacific Northwest. Nice, nice. I actually, um, I actually hail from Washington State. I live in Washington State. Ooh, oh, where? Oh, okay, Camas, south of Washington. Where okay. do you live? Where did you live in Washington? Um, I used to, I used to live in um, like uh, North Everett mostly. Okay. Um, you know, Marysville, that that area up there. But I have, I, I was, um, I did live in Lacey at one point um, when I first moved back to Washington. So, yeah, I was actually uh, born and raised there most of my life. Nice. I was born in Vancouver, just a 10 minute drive from me. Um, that's so cool. And you moved away? Yeah. Um, I moved uh, to Michigan um, to be closer to um, my late stepfather's family, but um, that obviously didn't really work out so i've been um pretty much living here um on my um well on my own most of most of my you know uh, adult life and not now with my wife here um in in the lower uh in the lower mitten <laughs> i have some friends that live in michigan they just moved there awesome awesome um do you know how they're uh how they're taking it um, I heard that tips are not very good over there, and it's a pay decrease. That's mm. just what I was hearing. I mean, her mom lives over there, so she wanted to live next to her mom, who is also a witch, which is really exciting nice. for her. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go visit them sometime because I want to meet her mom. Apparently, she's friends with the local ravens. That's a really awesome relationship to have. My wife is obsessed with having a relationship with crows. And Same. <laughs> We like rarely ever see any crows whatsoever around here. We uh, saw maybe one um, in, uh, I think it was in Livonia that we, we saw it. And we we're like all super shocked. Yeah. I mean, I want to be friend the like, local crows, local blue board birds. We have a lot of birds outside of the house, and I just want to hang out with them. One second, Wade, my rabbit's being naughty. I'm going to hurry me up back. Okay. Come on. Come on. She's a stinker. My bad, but I'm back. Nice. Oh, you're so cute. Yeah, this is Piper. Hi, Piper. <laughs> but yeah, I do want to visit Michigan sometime. I hear it's beautiful. Awesome. We should, we should definitely meet up and hang out. Yes, I would love that. Awesome. awesome. We'll definitely have to, um, when you uh, uh, come this way, we'll definitely have to uh, set, set something up. Definitely. Sure. That sounds wonderful. Um, next question. Uh, what do you think is the least most understood card from the tarot? For a beginner, the tower card. Because it's just inside sphere immediately. And then the devil card. I think those are the most misinterpreted cards a lot. Um, for the minor arcana, I would say the pages or the quartz cards. A lot of people have some issues with those. Um... Yeah, I, I just, I think the tower is misunderstood. I talked about this with the last slide with Lynn, but the tower really just incites so much fear. And depending on the tarot reader, they'll incite that fear with you. Right. But as I had mentioned with Lynn, is that like, sometimes we have unstable structures that we build in our lives and it's not serving us. And even though it can be really scary to be forced out of something and have to go through a change, if you don't go through that change and find something that is a better structure in your life, like let's say a house, if you build a house on a shaky foundation, that house is not going to like last. So you've got an inevitable doom for that house, whether or not 
you like it, sometimes it's better to move to have a better structure for a better foundation for a new house. You can live there a lot longer and not worry about it falling on you. And I mean, I understand, like, when I first got that deck, one of the readings I did for the month, I got the tower card and my house burned down. And that was really scary. It was terrifying. But I look back now, I would not have moved out. I was not happy there, but I wasn't going to move out. But I was going to be staying there for a long time, like the Four of Cups, just staying stagnant. And even though I wouldn't want to go through a house tragedy again, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. And like, I'm in a better place at the moment. So it can be terrifying, but sometimes it's necessary. And sometimes we need to just be forced to move. Um, and it can work in our benefit. So I would say, yeah, the tower. Um, and then for the pages and the court cards, I think it's just character ar archetypes that we have to learn, being able to understand someone's energy and how they move. Hi, Josiah, my friend joined. Um, that's really important. And the pages, I just think, isn't as clear cut as the knights in the court card. Does that make sense? Does any of that make oh, sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. and, and what you were talking about with, you know, with a, a tarot reader going in and, and projecting that fear, um, you know, a lot of that comes with um, our own personal um, uh, cognitive biases and um, some of also our... Um, our Christian, uh, former Christian upbringing yeah. can kind of manifest in that as yeah. well. Especially like with the devil card, mm -hmm. um, because people have a very negative connotation when it comes to the devil and what it, it, it the card truly represents. Um, yeah, because if you're a Christian, or not even just Christians, but some people who are just Christians, will look at the devil card and think immediately, Satan's scary, oh my God, hell. When the devil card can represent like a an attachment, a legal bound. It could represent marriage. It could represent a Capricorn. It could represent great sex. I mean, the devil card can be amazing for many reasons. Um, and it usually doesn't represent Satan at all. Um, but I mean, given a lot of people who don't look into things like the occult or tarot wouldn't know that because they're not looking into it. They're just judging off of face value. Um, and as you mentioned, you already know, it's not really about the devil. Yeah. And I, I know that um, my uh, my wife, for example, um, uh, had some coworkers when she uh, used to work um, for uh, TSA that um, that believed that tarot was um, connected to devil worship, and I just remember me and her looking at each other and being like, "Okay, well, we're definitely not going to be." you know, talking too much about that with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a client one time who advertised my business and said, Oh my God, this reading was amazing. Everything came true. And someone reached out to her personally and said, Hey, like you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go to tarot readers. They're of Satan and of the devil and it's evil. And I said, I'm so sorry. That must be like really uncomfortable. She's like, well, I don't like religion. On another note, you know, obviously uh, some people in the occult are, practices and do have religions um i think that what people know of religion is usually christianity and abrahamic religions um and because they tend to have their own beliefs that they can be very strict of course they came after her and were like you shouldn't do this i had someone make a comment saying tarot was evil i just laughed i was like you are you have no idea what you're talking about um it's just a divination system it's the person that you would deem evil not cards you know it doesn't it doesn't right. make sense to me but ignorance i don't yeah I, don't know. I mean i did read for a jehovah witness and he was a very big supporter and i was very surprised yeah um, that does surprise me yeah yeah it, it definitely surprised me uh i remember just he became my friend and he taught me a lot about french um he, he was a supporter he didn't believe it was evil he didn't advertise it but with the way that our conversations would go, it was fine. He got the Hierophant card as an as identifier. It was really funny. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. And he liked that. I think he really liked that, that he was he got identified as the Hierophant. Um, but no, I, I was really shocked um, because there's a lot of controversy on Jehovah's Witnesses. I just didn't expect it. I mean, my mom's not a Jehovah's Witness, and when I first started doing this, she was like, Christina, this is evil. 
this is of the devil. Yeah. All right. You just gotta laugh at some things, you know? And, you know, tarot, tarot card is kind of like, um, it's a tool like anything else. And it's yes. how you use that that determines, you know, whether it's good or bad. And, and I mean, there's so many instances in the Bible where there was the use of magic, like the Witch of Endor, for yeah. example, conjuring the prophet Samuel, you know. And that was not even remotely, um, you know, taken to be, uh, uh, you know, demonic. Or it was just a, a plot device in the book, basically. Yes. You know? Well, and you know, if you read Julius Caesar, he scried through water. Um, scrying it happened in the Bible. I think Revelations was a result of a vision and scrying. You know, I will have the conversation with my mom about it, and she says, well, Jesus performed miracles. But a lot of occultists would look at that and be like, he performed magic. Um, just like you said, uh, tarot is a tool, energy is a tool that we utilize. So it's not inherently an evil thing. It's more on the practitioner. How do we utilize that tool? How do we right. utilize neutral energy? How do we utilize a neutral deck of tarot cards that used to be made for a game where people would read tarot to play a game with? Um, I don't know. I, I laugh about it a lot. <laughs> I don't think I'm evil, but you know, what can you do? Some people are just convinced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, which reading method do you do you find the most comfortable or useful? Um, intuitive or kind of by the book? Here's the thing. If I was recommending someone starting out to do either tool, not tool, sorry, um, method, I would say use your intuition. Try your very best to just look at the cards and interpret it. That's how I was taught. And the, the guidebook was more for reference. Like if you're really stuck and you're missing that one thing, go to the guidebook. Um, if I'm learning a new deck, like I have the Britannica deck. I love that deck, but everything's so different. Um, the Four of Swords and the regular Rider Waite deck is really obvious, but in the Botanica deck, it's different, totally different. So I have to reference the guidebook. But for a newbie, I would say try your best to try to scry the card. Um, it sounds easier to say that, but if you can just try your best to interpret the image they tried to like plaster there, you'll understand what it's meant to do. Or even if you just pull a card once a day, see how the day is going to go, observe your day, you'll have a better understanding for the energy of that card. The guidebook is useful, but I don't like to use it all the time. It takes, if you reference it too much, it takes away from building up your natural intuition, which is important because some people will just read cards for clients. Some people use their intuition and their abilities alongside the cards for clients. And that's how you get like prophetic visions and future predictions. Um, if I just use the guidebook the whole time, I wouldn't be strengthening my natural ability I have. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't sure. want people to try to just constantly look at the guidebook and just forget that because they're not really building something that can be even more valuable. Right. And it kind of reminds me of, um, of Crowley's comments. Yeah. Um, how in order to break the rules, we have to know the rules first. Yeah. So the way I kind of look at it is you start out by the book and you build up that association. And then as you continue and progress and you have all of that, you know, mental memory, um, mm -hmm. you're able to um, develop a more intuitive um, framework with the cards that you're working with. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's not a bad idea. I just disagree a little bit, but I, it's not bad. It's <laughs> that's not bad. perfectly okay. Yeah, I think it's important to know the meanings of the cards. Um, and I mean, I've done the thing where it's like, okay, I'm really blanking for some reason. I'm going to go to Bay Tarot and type in Knight of Swords. But um, I do just worry about people just relying on the guidebook too much. We all right. can have, you know, our intuitive skills built up. We all necessarily have like psychic abilities, but people don't like nurture those abilities. They don't work on them. And tarot can be a wonderful tool to do that. But if you do rely on the guidebook too much, I think you can miss some things. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll definitely, you know, with my own personal tarot practice, I'll definitely, um, you know, 
use your your, your suggestion about um, taking a more intuitive approach to the, the tarot, and you know, and I'll see how um, how that works for me, and I'll definitely um, let you know um, um, my results and progress. Yeah, sure. please do, please do. Um, how long do you think it uh, it takes one to be a proficient tarot reader? It depends. Is the person reading every day for themselves and others? Is it for, is someone really studying the cards or just looking at the guidebook? Not, again, not, not roasting the guidebook. But someone could just be doing a reading once a month for a year and not really harness that ability. Or so someone that entire year is reading every single day for themselves for every situation multiple times a day. Um, I have a friend of mine who will read for every situation that he comes across. If someone is reading professional, like all the time, constantly, for anyone they get, for any situation they come across multiple times a day, every day, for a year, they could easily become very proficient. Um, and then you add on like four to five years, we put it for 10 years. It's really less about quantity of time and the quality. Because if someone is just reading like once a month and it's not really using that intuition, they're not really going to get as far as someone who's consistently reading all the time. Um, someone could easily, after a year of doing it constantly, all the time for the people and themselves and getting really good progress in journaling, and if they know all the cards very well, they probably are proficient. But not everyone's doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah, and basically it's um, proficiency, proficiency is dependent on constant and continuous practice. Exactly. I think for me, the reason I feel very good about my readings is I've read for a lot of people and I've read for myself in most situations almost every day for four years roughly roughly um, and for me with all of the testimonies that I have I feel really confident in my ability um, I think if I took out some of those factors I wouldn't feel very confident there's people out there that have read for like 10 to 20 years and I don't have that history um, but most of the things I read for people come true. So I, I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> um, to kind of uh, expand on that a little bit, um, trying to remember what I was going to ask you. Oh, yes. Um, how, do your, how does your intuitive interpretation of a card say differ from the, the book definition of the card? Yeah. Okay. So did I, did I, did I formulate that question? Yeah. Correct? I'm just thinking about it. Okay. Um, my interpretive. So this is going to sound so bizarre and counterintuitive for what I just said, but some <laughs> cards do have a little bit of different energy. So seven of swords I brought up earlier. Some people read that and immediately think sneaking, cheating, lying. Um, sometimes it comes up. Sometimes that's not the case. And I can get a very intuitive feel on it and be like, this doesn't feel like someone's being sneaky. It just feels like someone's being private. Or you can tell. You can really obviously tell. As far as interpretive dif um, differences, some cards do... <sighs> some cards do read a little bit different. Um, it, it's more situational. So... While the Knight of Swords might be fast-moving energy, um, for someone else, it could be a lot slower for them. It's, it's very circumstantial. I don't think it's necessarily that, like, you don't want to give cereal box definitions for cards. You don't want to do that. It boxes you in, and it does take out the limit, like, the ways these cards can help for you. The double card can be a legal contract. It can be business. It can be sex. It can be marriage. Or it could just be a Capricorn. Or it could be someone who's not telling you the full truth. It could be a boss. It can be so many things. But the little tiny guide bag that it comes with you doesn't include all of that. In fact, right. most people only know it's a Capricorn card if you study tarot actively. Because I don't think the writer Ray even talks about Zodiac associations. No. Um, I've, yeah, it doesn't. I've had the devil card come up for many different reasons, and very, very rarely is it scary for me. But if you read the Rider Waite definition guidebook, it, it kind of scares you a little bit because it's a devil card. So I guess it's kind of counterintuitive because 
you don't want to rely on the guidebook. The guidebook is a baseline for the structure. Um, yeah. I hope that answered that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely okay. did. Good. Because um, most of the uh, later, um, like, the, the ceremonial, uh, tarot of ceremonial magic, that um, um, definitely incorporates zodiacal and planetary energy with each card. Yeah. Um, you know, it just lays all of the correspondences for each card out there for you to see. Um, I would say that the Rider Way is a great beginner deck. Um, yes. But if you're looking for substance, it's the way I look at it is it's more flash than substance. Yeah, it is. Um, it totally is. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, I I use the the writer weight, but that, that's mostly because I don't uh, read for every situation. Um, yeah. I you know I'm I would say I'm a oh wow there's like a whole family of frogs now. Um, sorry. They're watching you. They're it's my ADHD. Out. Folks, it's my ADHD. I get easily distracted. Ooh, squirrel. You know. Yeah. No <laughs> uh, But anyways. Um, so yeah, uh, where was I? We um, were talking about how the Rider Waite's kind of shallow, and it kind of yeah. is pretty shallow. Yeah. I wish that I was proficient in multiple decks. I really want to be proficient in the Thoth deck, the Hermetic deck, the main systems. And there's also a deck that was made before the Rider Waite that was very, very obviously Golden Dawn. I forgot what that deck is. It's in, um, Dan Daniel Michael Craig's book, Modern Magic. He talks about it. He recommends that well over the right away, especially the Hermetic. He doesn't even like the right away he talks about. He says, if you have it, sure, it works, but it's not great. Um, I think most people just know the right away imagery. I mean, know yeah, that yeah. very well in pop culture. Yeah, because it's, it's, um, it's a very easy deck to work with when you're a beginner. The symbolism yeah. is very basic and easy to pick up on. Um, but like I, I, I was saying, I'm not a very proficient tarot reader. I don't really um, read that much. I don't read for other people. Um, I mean, I might do it for a family or friend who um, is interested in, in, you know, what the answer might be from the card out of simple curiosity. But I wouldn't say I'm proficient enough to read for the stranger on the street. Um, I, I'm... And I don't really, I, I've tried doing intuitive, um, in, intuitive card reading um, before a little bit. And my, my intuitive uh, answers to the cards correspondences are completely different from, from the book. Um, it like I'll look at, huh? It happens sometimes. Sometimes the message that needs to come across. You're like, this doesn't add up to the cards I'm seeing, but I feel this is the answer. It does right. happen. Yeah. Sometimes you just get different cards. I had it happen for a client. His card was not coming out. I was like, I feel this card and it's not here. It's just so bizarre. It's the first time it's ever happened to me. But I sat there at that bar and I was like, this is gonna sound bizarre, but I'm really expecting this card to be here. This is the energy of the reading is this, I need to direct it towards this. Near the end of the reading, the card flew out. And I was like, there we go. <laughs> there it is, there she is. And that's the one thing I find interesting about tarot specifically is that you could do uh, multiple spreads for the same question. You get different cards, obviously, but the answer, uh, underlying answer would be the same regardless. Yeah, I don't use spreads. <laughs> I don't. You don't, don't use spreads. How, how limit me. I get too wrapped up in the correspondence with spreads. I just like to just, so what I do is I have what falls out. I don't even pull. Most of the times I don't pull. It feels unnatural to me. I just shuffle and the cards come out. Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 20. When I do spreads, I feel mm -hmm. boxed in. And I don't like that. I get a good gist of what's going on. I read left to right and I usually know what's going on. I never ever, I'll use it to practice. So if I'm interviewing a deck, who's an interview the, the tarot deck, I get a feel for the overall energy and how I'm gonna work with it. That's how I knew the mermaid tarot was gonna work great for me. 
every answer was like, we're gonna be great business partners, it's gonna be awesome. And I've had decks just like give me such confusing answers in the interview tarot deck that I'm like, this isn't gonna work. I've actually had to give that deck away because it wasn't, I was like, uh uh, we're not on the same page. And it's weird because I don't even know if I believe that decks have personalities per se, but they do just, they're different. They have different structures and they can talk different and interact with you differently. Um, so I'll use the interview, uh, tarot deck for the new decks, but I, I don't, I don't do spreads. I don't like being boxed okay. in. I like the way that I do my readings. Um, I, I've tried it, but if anything, it just takes more time and not in a good way. I try to my readings from time, like 30 minutes to an hour or more. But if I'm sitting here with one question and I'm trying to sit here like, wait, what did this card spread for this position mean? I, it, it disrupts my natural flow and you want to be in the flow state. So for me, I just, I have what falls out. I put it together and I just give the news to the client. I can't do spreads. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just the weird one out. And, and no, you know, and the way I look at it is, is, you know, you know, you know, do what thou will, you know, everyone is, you know, works with their, their um, tools differently. And, there's no exactly right or wrong way to work with your pool, you know, whether okay. it's a tarot deck or a wand or, you know, an athame or whatever. It's how that that tool, how you connect to that tool, just like with yes. deities or anything else. And I think I kind of agree that um, that I think decks have, do have personalities. They're kind of like, um, oh, what's a great, uh, Japanese uh, katanas. Um, the idea that um, there's each each sword has like a soul to it, a spirit to it, and and, it's very and how the warrior connects to that connects to that sword is you know it can, working with that spirit, and it's the same way with the tarot. You know, it's yeah. about developing that relationship with the deck. You know, I don't think it's a bad belief system. I mean, I was very animist for a while. I still have a lot of animist beliefs. I just recently started having a conversation with a practitioner where he said, tools are just tools that help us connect with spirit. And I was like, you're right. If the, the basis of this is meant to be a connection with the higher divine, with our higher selves, with our HGAs, whatever we believe in, whatever is divine to us. Um, and I do think we can over personify our tools a little bit. So he did get me thinking about that. I do think that my other decks do speak differently. I have some decks that will just be pretty brutal and I'll have some decks that I just don't connect with at all because of the way they're built. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I am 100% believe that each deck has a spirit. Maybe crystals because, you know, they're born, like not born, but crystals grow in the earth and they're connected to the earth. I could believe they have more of a spirit to them, but decks, I don't know. I, I do see them more as tools that help us connect to where we want to go. I don't okay. know if I believe they have individual spirits. I don't nurture those spirits. I do right. connect with the deck. I have to think about it. If you asked me <laughs> a year or two years ago, I would say, yes, they have individual spirits. They have their own personalities. Now I'm just not sure. I don't know. It's, it's from, I mean, this is why I love having these conversations. Um, with, with guests, you know, I, you know, as much as I, you know, I don't really like hearing myself talk, um, <laughs> but, um, but I, li I like having, uh, having a dialogue and a discourse because that way I'm able to, you know, get ideas and share ideas with other, other people. And it, it challenges me. It challenges my way of thinking and my way of doing things within my own practice. Yeah. So. I mean, that guy I was talking about, like, it really opened my eyes about how a lot of practice has changed. Because he says that with the way he reads, it doesn't see, he doesn't see a spirit to Dex at all. He doesn't see it any more than just a tool we use. I was like, wow, like, that's not what most practitioners say. Like, a lot of people these days are like, wow, this, this deck will rip you to shreds. This deck is sweet. And it's this personality type. So it was nice to have a different perspective. It was really refreshing. I was like, I don't normally talk about this and hear this from someone who practices tarot or, or practices divination with playing cards. Usually they have a personality to them. 
Um, but I like that. It got me thinking, how much do we over personify our tools? When, uh, you know, some people believe that you, should be pra you can practice without tools at all. How much do we put into the tools when we're supposed to be putting into ourselves? Like if we hold the magic and we're the conduits of magic, you know? Right. Um, uh, next, next question. What's the biggest piece of advice you could give to someone looking to get into tarot? Okay. Try really hard not to spend money on programs. Not that it's bad. Not that it's bad. I did it. I, I, it benefited me a lot. You just don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah. Honestly, the most you can do is build a practice. Build a connection with your deck. Again, you don't have to believe it has a spirit. Or you can believe it has a spirit. Whatever works for you. Whatever gets that connection going. Work with it as much as possible. Try to use your intuition if you can. If you can, try to scry the cards. Um, you can also do path working with the Kabbalistic tree. Um, I haven't done that yet. I really want to try path working. Um, just my best advice is try really hard not to fall into programs and try to just build that connection yourself at home. Even if it's tough at first, because it was really hard. It's hard for everyone at first. But when you get a few years in and you start getting used to it, like this is actually kind of easy. I, the more I talk about now is like, you know, five years ago, this was so hard. And sitting here now, this is so easy. I can't imagine not knowing this. This is just, if anything, I feel like I want to get even deeper. I mean, I'm really interested in scrying with my, my Black Obsidian here and other types of um, divination systems that's more complex and harder and you need to train more for that, not train. But, you know, you just build a practice for it, not everyone can scry. Right. So try not to be stapled to your guidebook. Try not to fall into programs. It's okay if you do. Nice. That's so cool. I don't yes. have one of those. I just have a round obsidian uh, mirror. And round obsidian mirrors are, are just as good, in my opinion. It doesn't have to... Oh, what happened? Did something happen? Didn't happen on my end. Okay. Um, well, round obsidian mirrors are just as, as effective as, as a triangle heart. It's just... It, it's bougie. I, I like it. it it's yeah. me. <laughs> it's um, nice. um, it's uh, it's also expensive. <laughs> yeah. Mine's um, not cheap, but I like it. It's cute. I work with well, it. You know, I correct me if I'm wrong. Like Nostradamus, he worked with um, uh, like I think it was uh, a bowl with water, and he did water scrying, and that's how he developed his quatrains, you know, from, yeah. from what I've read. So, yeah. I, I mean, mean... I've heard people can scry through your windows and mirrors. I don't... I haven't done that. That's cool. Or fire. So interesting. Oh, I have scryed through smoke. I did do that once. It wasn't very proficient, but it was very interesting. Hmm. Um, see, I'm more... See, I'm at this point in my practice where I want to go deeper. Like, I want to be evoca evoking spirits. I want to be, like, direct communication. I want to be getting lost in trances and in, in scrying. Um, I love my tarot decks, and I have such a connection with them. I love being a tarot reader for people. But I just, I, I itch for more. You know what I mean? Like, there's just yes. so much more out there that I want to have get. You ever, have you ever heard of uh, Carol Pope Runyon? No, I haven't. He has a book on Solomonic magic. He has a, uh, if there's a documentary, uh, like a video, um, I think that, I think it, it was, you know, packaged with the book, mm -hmm. but uh, you can, I think you can still find it on YouTube. Um, okay. But it, it. It's definitely, it, it'll definitely scratch that itch for um, spirit evoking and stuff like that. It's a little, it's a little, a little cheesy, in some ways, but it's fun cheesy. Um, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I like fun cheesy. I'm a cancer. <laughs> um, um, I did pay. I did pay Jason Miller for his evocation. Not pay him directly, but the website. His website. I paid for the evocation audio. I took notes on the whole thing. It just feels very daunting. Um, besides that, I am excited. I might be evoking for the Olympic of Mars. Um, I'm really interested in protection at the moment. I've been doing passive evocation with other people. Um, my dad, actually, he is really cool. He can just, like, 
channel right in my living room no tools just wings it and the things that he's come up with i'm like what how are you doing this i'm your blood teach me teach me how you're doing this the things like i my wife is exactly me. like that really she just has yep, prophecy she can, she can just channel she can just put she can manifest energy put up her shields um i like... want to get there i want to get there <laughs> so bad my the things my dad's done like i remember so i did my first exorcism last year and it didn't go amazing that's okay i learned my lesson um my dad's done many and so i know this is obviously not terror i apologize we can go back to terror in a moment um but like i for the next couple months things were off and i was like why are things just like so weird in this house and i need my dad to step in and be like okay it's in that room i'm gonna go chase it out you got a spirit in here and i just i watched him just like invoke stuff and just chase the spirit out my front door and he had his hands up and he was channeling the this came from this person what did you do and i'm like i did i did an exorcism dad and he's like okay well this is making a lot more sense then this is the, the missing puzzle piece it, it just it, it just astounds me the thing my father can do and i have amazing magician friends too who are just so cool or wizard friends as well the things they can just do without tools i'm like get me there that's where i want to go well like when you were talking about the lbrp earlier um i was on a uh like a, a vacation with my my wife and mom mm -hmm. and um and i just sat down and i just did a lot just doing the lbrp while i was just sitting there meditating that's and amazing. you know because I recently learned that any ritual that you can you can do in the physical world, you can do you can visualize yeah. on the oh, app. Yeah. Yeah. And it made it made me realize that all of the tools, the wands, the the triangles of art, the the athames, they're just they're stepping stones for actually doing uh, it completely. Look, no hand, you know, basically. <laughs> That's so um, cool. See, my visualization is so blocked off, and I've been, like, struggling so hard to get it unblocked. Um, I think there was one time I did the LBRP, and I, like, started to see the pentagram. I was like, is that what everyone's saying? And I lost it, and I haven't done it in months. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I had another visualization time. It was when I was working at the mall giving terror readings. I remember just plain as day seeing something and being like this never happened like i'm, I'm getting somewhere i don't yes. have that natural visualization technique I, it you, know so cool. you know what helped me with visualization um and this and this has everything to do with tarot too because you know there's aspects of visualization in in in, in tarot as well yeah um, but what one of my uh ways of visualizing is actually reading fiction yeah that makes sense i guess it really that. helps you visualize it, it doesn't help me visualize i do i'm a huge reader and i actually used to do youtube videos on books i used to read several years ago but i can't connect that way um when i was little i could have um i had a lot of things that i did when i was little but i had something i think i had something happen that blocked it off um, hmm. I've had people say we think it's because of trauma I went through that just blocked off the ability. Um, because my dad, it's just, it's there. It's so strong. He talks about things in his mind's eyes. Like, I can't describe it to you, but I'm seeing it. Um, I, a lot of my practice right now is how do I harness that? How do I get where I'm seeing all these practitioners go? Because I have the ability. I saw things when I was little. I just have it from that one span of time. It's been blocked. Um, but because of my rituals, I am getting somewhere. Um, actually, what's really interesting, you mentioned the astral. A lot of my prophecies have come in my dreams. And it's so clear. I actually have a dream journal, and I have had vivid, lucid dreams since I was little. Um, and I've been carrying, I've been using a dream journal for a long time. Um, so the last year or so, I started having a lot of things come through in my dreams. So vivid and clear as day. That's, I guess, might be my innate ability, is that I should just harness the dream work. Um, but I can't help it. I would like to, I would like to have strong visualization in the daytime. I would like to be seeing the pentagrams and the angels. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would definitely be very cool. Um, my wife, uh, every morning, um, 
my wife has crazy dreams too. Very, you know, very awful kind of dreams. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you have have that issue or anything like that. I'm not implying anything like that. But um, she has very interesting dreams, and she always tells me about them. And I'm, I'm like, why don't you write this stuff down? Oh, and she's like she's like, by the time I go to write it down, I've completely forgotten it. I'm like, obviously not if you're telling me this hours later. <laughs> I have dreams from my childhood I still remember vividly. Like I, I don't have good memory usually, but for my dreams, like they've really impacted me. I've had times where I'm like, I can't wake up because I'm so trapped in a dream. And then I'll I'll think about it all night. Um, I immediately write it down. I can't imagine that. I mean, I've had partners that they don't dream. Or if they do dream, they don't remember at all. There's none, nothing blank. And I'm like, how? I I have had dreams that, like, the beginning of this year, I could just tell you in detail. Because they even impacted me. Sometimes it feels so real that when I wake up, I'm confused. Because I'm like, wait, wait, what? That wasn't real? It feels, I, I, oh, I could go on about dreams. I know it's not our session. We're going on a whole different tangent. Right, right. So powerful. Um... I was going to say, what kind of book or program recommendations do you have? And we are, you already talked about programs. Yeah, I mean, I did pay for a program. It did help me a lot. I mean, it wasn't a waste of money. But I look back now and I'm like, I could have figured this out on my own. I, I just, I wouldn't recommend it. But I mean, so there is someone, she's an influencer online. Her name is Jessica Alexandra. She has Behind Life as a website and she does have a terror school. And I did pay for that. Uh, and it did help me. I, I liked her teachings. I just also know that I could have gone somewhere without that. Um, I also know there's like the 98 Degrees of Wisdom. That's a great book to reference. There's a lot of books to reference. And a lot of people have their own programs. Um, I think that you don't need any of it. I don't think you need those books. I don't think you need the programs. I think you just need you and practice and your deck you connect with. And just you just continue trying. Um, that's a lame answer. It really is. But I'd be lying if I said that you need any of this. That's, I, that's definitely challenge. That's definitely uh, challenge accepted. Uh, you know. Yes. If you if you're really passionate about tarot, um, as you know, as she is, uh, try her approach. You know. Yeah, that, that's I mean, my recommendation. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think sounds... Jason Miller has a thing about tarot. You can do it. Totally. It might help you. I like I said, it wasn't a waste of money for that program. It's just that I know I don't I didn't need that. Um, it was useful to me. I liked it. I had a good time. I spent the money on it and I worked through all the all the videos and lessons. I just don't think you need it. I think you just you just need to work with your deck and you need to learn yourself and your own intuition and build that up. Um, you don't need to spend all this money. You don't. But I think a lot of occult practitioners are people who are really interested and passionate in these things. They want, they like, I will throw money at this because I want to do this. This is so cool. And I get it because I've done that. I still do it. I mean, I have a book club on my um, Discord server and we're reading a Modern Magic right now. And I mean, it's really interesting. I, I think you can learn a lot of this stuff without buying these books. But why else do occult the cult practitioners buy these books. We want to. We want to learn this. We buy our tools because they're awesome when we connect. We don't need, you don't need the bells, but you buy the bells because you're like, this is sick. I'm going to use this. I'm an occult practitioner. I get it. If you want to buy the program, if you want to buy the book, go get it. But I don't think you need it. I think you just need yourself and a deck and you need to practice and you need to try and you need to keep trying. And you need to get wrong sometimes. If you don't have wrong readings sometimes, you don't know what good readings are. Um, when I have a bad reading, and it's very few, I laugh at myself. But I'm like, you know, that doesn't happen usually. But this makes me feel good about all my good readings I give. If, you're, nice. if you don't allow yourself to be wrong sometimes, you're not going to grow in tarot because this is the nature of it, especially reading for other people. People are tricky. They have biases. We have biases. They have lives. Things are messy. So, yeah, I know I just kind of went on a tangent there, but try hey, your hardest to just get to the book. Not the book, the, the deck. Yeah, it, bare bones. Um, uh, a bare bones approach is not a, it's not a bad approach. It's not. Sure. It's just hard. 
And if you're new to this concept, right. if you don't know how to use utilize intuition, it's going to be difficult. It's difficult for me. I got frustrated. I was like, what is intuition? What? All right. And where can people find you? Yeah. So this is my main account, Miss Bunny Ears. Um, I've had this account for a long time. I do have a business account. It's Christina Divine Tarot. I'm not sure if I like it. It feels very forced. Um, I I usually run everything on Discord and Instagram. So just with funny ears. Um, I'm active on Discord some communities. Like I'm active in Lynn's server. I have my own servers. Um, but yeah, you can just find me here on Instagram. I'm working on my website currently. Otherwise, I'd be very professional linking my website where you can book a reading. But it's in the works. So you can find me online. Yeah, I guess Facebook too, but I don't have like a Facebook business account. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, awesome. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your daily practice and stuff. Yeah. But we only have five minutes left. Okay. Um, so do you want to do a, do you want to come back for a part two and talk about your daily practice and stuff like that? Or do you want to like, we do can a, end it off with daily practice. We can end it off with the daily practice? Yeah. Okay. Not. All right, awesome. So talk to me a little bit about your daily practice and, and what that looks like. So I've been kind of on a hiatus. I had COVID, so I haven't been practicing lately. Um, but what my daily practice usually consists of is like five different meditations, um, the LBRP and the NPR. And then there's like the neophyte meditation too. Um, that was a lot of my daily practice as well as pulling cards. Um, oh, hi. One well, of my friends joined. Um, awesome. I would pull cards like for every situation I come across, or daily on a daily basis. I'm at least pulling cards. I haven't done the LBRP and the NPR in my meditations as often lately. Like I said, I've been sick. Um, but when I was doing them for a good solid five months, it was making a lot of a difference. Oh, and then I was worshiping Hecate and other gods as well. I was doing a daily practice with them. It was very involved. I started stacking on a lot of things I wanted to do, and then it was overwhelming me. Um, it got to the point where I'd spend like an hour a day on just doing different occult things. I think I've had someone recently tell me that I should incorporate a certain ritual from Jason Miller's sorcery book. Um, I need to look at that. He said it's better than the NPR. Um, he said okay. the NPR can kind of just like clear things out. If my friend is still here, he might be scolding me because he's the reason I have my now, daily practice. Remind me what the NPR is. The middle pillow ritual. Uh, the middle pillow ritual. The the middle pillar ritual. Yeah. Okay. Do you know? Uh, that? I I know of it. I've never done it. <laughs> it's supposed to help you build your psychic abilities and your visualization skills. So you're like visualizing this gold um, giant orb floating above your head. And then you say some things and encant some things. And it basically goes through you. And you build this like conjure with the golden orb. Um, hmm. It did me justice. Oh, oh, I also did the Bornless ritual. I was reading the Bornless ritual every day. So I was doing like a bunch of these rituals constantly for months. It, it's been a while. Um, I recommend looking at the middle pillow ritual because it was slow, so I pause the video. I recommend looking at the middle pillow ritual, um, but I am like moving my practice. I'm trying out different things. I might not stick with it. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll just. I like to keep things how they are if they work for me. Um, but I mean, I'm assuming you do the LBRP, right? Um, I. I do it occasionally. Um, most of my daily practice is theurgy. Um, uh, I do um, I do a morning ritual to raw heart wheat in order to start my day, and then at night I do a uh, prayer and mass to Babylon. Nice. And that's basically what most of my practice is. Aside from studying, I I do I have a a thirty minute read session um, every day. I've read. Uh, 17 books so far. Um, nice. So okay. I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. Um, I want to do some, I want to change some things up mm -hmm. with my practice. I like changing things up to keep it more fluid and more challenging. Um, 
So I'll definitely try working with Soul Killer. I have done the Bornless Ritual. Um, I did that through um, some of my uh, Enochian scrying nice. stuff. Um, and a, a lot of and the Enochian rituals that I, I did were from uh, Long Mileage Cat Book, uh, Enochian Vision Magic. Mm -hmm. um, very, very good book on that, tons of rituals. Um, for tarot, uh, it will make a recommendation. It's called um, Tarot for Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. Um, that was a really awesome book. There is a Spiral Bound edition, which I think would be perfect for a beginner uh, into tarot. And the, the way the book is set up is it basically does um, it's a workbook that kind of helps you develop your connection with tarot and with the cards. Um, so Ooh. it's very helpful too. So. Nice. It was awesome to have you on and talk to you. Um, I, I hope to have you on at some point in the future and discuss yes. other topics. Um, I would love to. This was fun. I enjoy these lives. I want to go live more often. So definitely have me back. I don't, I'll definitely oh, uh, and and um, if you want to do a, a, a live on your channel, um, I would be glad to join you at some point as well. Hell yeah! I'll definitely invite you sometime. I want to go live. I just I'm so busy. It's been hard to do the whole social media thing. I'm trying to do this whole like influencer thing, and I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You know, I've thought about you know someone someone recently. Um, uh, made me, you know, talk about influencers and stuff, and I was like, yeah, I don't really consider myself an influencer. I'm just here. I, my show is just here for fun. You know, oh, it's yeah. just something I like to do. It's my side hustle, you know? Nice. I don't blame you. Yeah, I enjoyed this. I love to talk about more about other occult practices too outside of tarot, because there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff about magic, and that's so intriguing. Um, but I, I love talking about tarot. So I was really excited that you invited me. This was... Yes, yes. Well, you have a wonderful evening, and I look forward to talking with you later. Sounds wonderful. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 93. 93, 93.